Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another awesome Tinkercad project. So let's get cracking. So this is the HL Mod Tech LED sign. Let me walk you through how this came to be. Users have been asking about how to create connected text. I've got a technique that's pretty darn fast. As you can see from the little YouTube short, we do have it lit up. And now I'm going to share with you the steps that got me this far. So step one was Canva. I am just using the basic version of Canva and I sign in with Google. I usually hit create new design and I choose the Instagram post. This is the design I've been working on. I named it Yeah because I was using this font back in the day. You can see it has got the nice connected letters and the only problem was the exclamation did not connect. If we click on this font, it is called Bukhari Script. This one right here is Bukhari Script again. Notice it had the weird spot in the T. And then as I was exploring fonts, I found Genty. Now I like Genty because it's got quite a bit of gaps and it connected all the way across. There are a ton of fonts that you can work through. Make sure you have fun selecting them. Do make sure that you've got enough gaps for the project that you're trying to build though. Of course, my strategy was simply guess and check. When I had the font I wanted, I took a screenshot of it. I've got a shortcut key, so I can simply grab the text I want. That immediately takes it to snag it, and then I'm gonna simply export that as a JPEG. From the JPEG, we're gonna visit picksvg.com, and we're gonna choose Upload. Of course, in my downloads, we can find that little picture that I just took a moment ago. When it shows up, Find the one that you like. I think this one is fantastic. It's a little larger than the other one was. And I'm going to choose Download SVG. I'm going to call it HL Connected 2. I'm going to put an A after this just because I ended up doing it twice. Now we can return to Tinkercad and I'm going to start a brand new project. Once again, you can do that by simply hitting Create 3D Design. Let's start by naming the project. I'm going to call this LED Sign. I'll put a two after it because I've already made one with that same name. If you've got a larger printer bed, you can change those settings right now. I know that mine could go up to 260, so I'm going to make it 260 on each side. And then I'm going to hit close settings. Now I'm going to hit import, and we're going to choose that SVG file. There's the 2A. We want the art. Now this is important. You need to remember what number you pick. I want to make sure mine fits on this board, so I'm going to type 220. That gives me room on each side, and I can hit Import. After just a moment, our design comes in, and we can start building. Now, I want to put LEDs in here, so I need more room. I'm going to take this number that was 37, and I'm going to make it 60. That gives me a lot more space in that direction. But once again, I'm going to keep the 220 I typed here. That's important as we build other parts. All right, friends, so here is the trick. We're gonna take this and we're gonna do Control D. I'm gonna take the second one and I'm gonna make it bright pink. I like to fiddle out here with the custom colors. I'm gonna take that bright pink one and I'm only gonna make it one thick. So now you can see it down at the bottom and we're gonna switch it to the silhouette. It takes a moment to switch, but just like that, we have created the back of our sign. Now we could stay with this middle, but I want to be able to put the lights in here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to switch it to the inner line. And I'm going to make it 1.2 millimeters thick. I do want to change it to round. And then I want to make the quality as far up as it'll go. This is the outline of our shape. Now we've got some room to put our LEDs inside it. I'm going to grab these two and I'm going to just move them up and then I'm going to click on either one of them and do control D and shift nudge to move it down. Now this is also going to be the same wall for the top. I'm going to change that to 15 so I have more room for the electronics inside. And now I'm going to hit the work plane button which is the letter W. I'm going to set it right on top. I'm going to do control D. I'm going to do D to drop and I'm going to take this second one and I'm going to switch it back to default. Notice we do have to be patient while they switch. And there it finally is. And then I only want this to be 1.2 or maybe even 0.8 for that thickness. 
And we're going to do control D on that one again. And then this one is going to be the silhouette. And this one will definitely be thinner than the other one. Once again, you need to wait patiently. There it is. I'm going to type my point 0.8 and press enter. And now we have got the top of our design. Just for fun, I'm going to show the colors. Let's say I make this one a bright yellow. I'm going to make this one a blue. And I'm going to make this one a yellow. Just for fun. So I'm going to put the work plane back down on the ground. W is for work plane and click. And this is really your compartment area. If I click on this and do hide, you can see we've got all of that area for components inside. If I bring them all back, it's that quick and easy. Now I needed a system so that we could connect these together. Of course, we could glue them, but then you could not get back inside. So what I created were these little pins. I'm going to put the work plane on top of this pink one. I'm going to bring in a cylinder. When I set it down, I'm going to shift shrink it. And I went all the way down to size four. This time I'm going to do size three so they take up even less space. And then I want to put it on this wall back here. So I'm going to do W for work plane. I'm going to put it right on that spot. When I hit D for drop, it goes to that edge. And then I can stretch it up past so that they can connect. I'm going to choose 15. And then I'm just making sure that they have enough friction so that it holds it in place. I did also put a bevel of 2. And I'm going to do segments of 5. All right, so I added all of those by hand. It was guess and check as to how many I needed. This is a process I am still perfecting, but it did work. So let me show you something really quick that helped as I built them. I'm going to switch to flat view. I'm going to choose top. I'm going to click on the outside wall, and I'm going to do F for fit view. And then I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Now I can click on these and do control D. And with my nudge set to 0.1, I can just move them to the areas where I think they're going to be close. If you zoom way in there, you can see that is touching just a little bit. I think that's going to be moderately snug. And then I just added those all the way around. Friends, that is the entire trick. I'm going to switch back to perspective view. Let me take you to the real project and show you one other modification I made. So I will show you this. I'm going to hide this piece. My first test was just the back and the pins. And once I had that working, then I brought back the walls that you can see right here so that I had room for my electronics. If we do F for fit view, the lights that I'm using are these tiny rectangles that I could then hot glue into these locations. So right here on the walls, you can see I can ungroup. And this is where I added the parts that cut in. One thing I did notice is that I did not cut out the hole where I let the electronics out quite as far as I needed. I have also found that my electronics are a little bit squished. So I think I'm going to end up raising this up right there. It was five. I'm going to make sure that's at least 10 or maybe even higher as I work towards my final version. Before I go wrecking anything here though, I do want to remind you another of my favorite tricks is before I ever wreck something that's partially working, I will go back to my Tinkercad workspace and I'll click up here and I'll hit duplicate so that I never lose all the stuff that I've already been moderately successful at. Real quickly, just a few notes. I will have more videos as we get further along the process. If you're looking to create super huge signs, I do not have a super slick technique for cutting apart Tinkercad projects like this. There are much more expensive tools that can do that quite quickly, especially Fusion 360. Friends, just a quick note, if you're interested in learning all the power of Fusion 360, I do want to recommend the course on cadclass.org. It is absolutely amazing. If you click all courses, be sure to check out the Epic 3D Printing Masterclass. And of course, don't forget my new course, Tinkercad in 20 Days. Best of all, all of these have a coupon code HLTinkerCAD25 that'll get you 25% off 
any course you choose. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to mention my website, hlmodtech.com. I have got a tab dedicated to Tinkercad with tons of amazing categories. Below that, you'll find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. If you look down in the corner, friends, of course, you will find the built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. At the top of the page, you can find a link to the Tinkercad community discord. As you can see, we've got a boatload of members, and it's a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoy the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, friends, you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.